Hello there, friends and countrymen. Today, we're going to talk about something that's a little crazy. As uh, alluded to earlier in the stream, let's see. Okay, I'm about to say, I, I should be going. There we go. As I alluded to this morning, we're going to talk about some things that you should do to prepare for the next recession. And this is just one strategy that I thought of, and maybe you can um, make use of it. So what you're going to do is you're going to pretend that you've got to start from scratch. You're going to do this. You're going to like, okay, you just, you lost your job. You, um, someone died. I mean, you're in a situation where you've got to analyze everything that you own and you've got to make a decision. So you got to go through your house, find everything that is uh, non-essential and get down to the essentials because you've got to downsize. Now, this is just in theory, but you should act with a great sense of urgency because if you don't do these things, this could actually be your situation two years from now. Uh, the last recession caught a lot of people flat-footed. They weren't ready for it. They, um, they actually were decimated. They were seriously, seriously harmed with um, the things that happened because they, they had no savings. And I posted this number, and people still think it's funny, and they just can't believe that so many of these people in this country can't come up with 400 bucks. There are payday loan places. There are pawn shops. There are buy here, pay here. They're everywhere. These people exist. And I was watching this um, special. I, I should. I, I, hold on. Let me see if I can um, find that bad boy. And because this was. Hold on. I've got. Come on. Really? I'm going to have to go in my histories because I, I think you should watch this and try to watch it with an open mind because, all right, it's ABC News special. All right, so let me find it and put this under there because it was really, really interesting. Really, really interesting. Let's see, YouTube, because I'm going to put that in the comments. I'm going to put this on the video so you can actually see it. So Roberts County. And just, you know, when you have a moment, check it out. Because um, it is essentially the whole town voted for Trump, like like 92%. So I'm, I'm going to get into a little bit of it. But this will kind of give you some insights on why people are doing the things that they're doing. So Robert County most voted for Trump because I've been doing a lot of research, a lot of research for you guys. So there's that, you know, check it out when you get a chance. So you're in a situation where you got to make some moves. So take a sheet of paper and literally go around your house. And I mean, you're probably going to have to make three or four passes and you tag anything that is non-essential. If this thing doesn't bring you happiness, it doesn't bring you joy, doesn't have high utility, it's got to go. So do that exercise and then come up with a list and also come up with an alternative list of what you can sell this stuff for. Uh, some of you need to do this anyway because you just got too much stuff. I think pretty much the average person is probably can come up with two grand to maybe twenty thousand. Just depending on if you know if you're in an apartment, you're not going to come up with twenty grand. Uh, but if you're in like a four bedroom house, full basement, and it's just packed from the ruler to the tuda, this could very much be the thing that happened. Then you got to get scared. You got to have that sense of urgency 
to propel you to action because without it, you know, this will not work because this is, you know, for some of you, it may be really challenging, but when I was in that situation and for many, about three years, I, I, all my possessions would have fit in about two or three trash bags, not even suitcases, trash bags, because I didn't have that much. I uh, didn't, I just had a few clothes. I had my photo albums. I even had a storage uh, storage unit in East Point at a public storage, uh, oddly enough. I got it out of there. I didn't have much. Now, also not having much also created this likeness because whenever I had to pick up and make moves, I could do it. I didn't have a lot of stuff, so I didn't have stuff holding me back. Some of you, you have stuff that's holding you back. It's, uh, it might be the house that you might need to sell. And let's talk about that. If you are in a position or you're thinking about selling your house, put your, mar- put your house on the market this summer. Put that bad boy on the market this summer. Start getting ready. Get that sucker ready for sale now. Because you may not be able to sell it in 15 to 24 months. Or you may have to take a huge loss to sell it. So if you're, you know, if you're not going to move or you're in a good situation or your house is paid off, you know, ignore this advice. But if you're thinking about moving, I would suggest you sell the house. I suggest you pare down, become very cash heavy and rent. Yes, I would suggest that you rent starting in this time frame, because unless you can get a house at an amazing discount deal, if you're going to buy a house, you got to get a gangster deal. You got to get 30, 40 grand off. You have to. Or you don't buy that puppy because what I feel is going to happen is we're going to have a lot of people. I don't think it's going to be mortgage driven, but the mortgages and interest rates will be impacted. Uh, The ability for people to buy homes will be impacted. This is no joke. So that would be one of your tactics. Now, the reason that you want to become light is think about what you worry about. You worry about your car. Like me, I have two cars, so I've got, you know, my insurance is kind of high and well, we have a two car garage. So I'm always worried about my car and, you know, it doesn't seem like a big thing. Am I going to park it on the street? Because what am I going to do here? Um, those little things now, that's pretty much the only excess I have because I have a limit to what I'm going to allow in my life. Because I don't want my life just full of stuff just for the sake of having stuff. But if I had to do this exercise that I was giving you, I wouldn't really sell that much. Because I just don't allow stuff to accumulate because there's a mental toll on having stuff. I'll tell you the secret. Well, not a, not a secret, but it's kind of a secret. There was this lady, and she came in to pay off her unit. She had a 10 by 20 and she had been paying on it three years and it was an expensive unit. It was like $290 a month. So she spent over nine grand, probably 10 grand to store stuff. Now, I don't know what it was like, but typically if you're going to put stuff in storage, you want to leave it in there six months because what's going to happen is if you leave it in there year after year after year, you reach a point of diminishing returns where you've like paid for that stuff two, three, and four times. I'm serious. I've seen this happen quite a bit. So, you know, you don't want stuff in storage. You really don't because once it gets in there, you put that stuff on auto pay. It's easy to forget. And then the inertia of going to get it because you got to get some momentum to go get it. And you have to get some momentum to sort through it. So the mental stress and weariness that it creates, that stuff can sit in there for a year or two easy. Wasted money, wasted resources. So be real careful about putting stuff in storage. Now, after you comb through this house, you got to do what I call guerrilla ninja budgeting. You got to pretend that you don't have a job. You have no money coming in. Go through your house like a ninja and with this thought in your head, what's real, what's important, not it'll become crystal clear. One of the things that happens is when people have a lot of stuff and there's no crisis and there's no reason to get rid of it, 
Nothing happens. But dad gets cancer, mom gets cancer. We got to sell stuff. We got to raise money. That stuff be it. The decision making process when you have a health issue becomes so easy. This is important. This isn't important. It becomes crystal clear. So what I want you to do is fake some kind of crisis because that's going to help you get clarity on what you need to get rid of. And I mean, seriously, you want to be light. You want to be at your fighting weight, so to say, because with this recession will come opportunity. But if you are loaded down with stuff, like if your garage looks like a a madhouse and you've got all this stuff, that's not going to be really good because each thing that you have in your life, there's an opportunity cost for having it in your life. You want to be as lean as possible. Um, my thing with clothes, I lost a lot of weight. I gave a lot of clothes to Goodwill. I did not replace them. I have virtually no dress clothes because I don't go anywhere where I have to dress up. It just doesn't happen. So, you know, all of the suits and stuff is like, psh, they're gone. All my suits and stuff are from my fat man days. So I I will, once I have a purpose for that type of stuff, I'll go out and get it. But right now, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone. And part of the situation is when I walk in my house, there's a lot of space because there's no clutter. If you have a cluttered house, and there's some of you who operate very well in clutter, but typically most of us operate inefficiently in doing clutter because you're always picking up stuff, you're moving stuff. It's opportunity cost. There's energy used up in that. So you want to get rid of it. So you want to lean out as lean as possible now because if you wait, what happens in the recession? The price of new goods go down. Therefore, the price of used stuff also goes down. And this is something I confronted many times in the resale industry that people really didn't know what the market was bearing because they would try to sell me stuff for like $50 or $100 off the cost of new. And they've had it for a year. And I'm like, boo, it does not work that way. I am buying this from you to resell to someone else, which means I got to have a lot of fat on this bone. It can't be all bone. This bone is good for you, but it's not good for me. And I just walk away because it was an untenable economic situation. And some people would hold on to stuff and they would throw it in storage then someone like me would come along and get it at auction. It's just maddening. So you want to really, really act like your life is on fire and you've got to get rid of this stuff. Because um, essentially, for those who make these moves now, it's going to be crazy good in the future. Let's see what's going on. Raleigh T. Richardson. Kindle Vision, SaveYourGames.com, Exodus, what's up? Sense of Reality, what's going on? 89, Dr. Funk, Romero Fisher, he's new, what's up? Oh, we'll talk about Bitcoin in a minute. What's up, Chris Monroe? Short Change, what's going on? Tiger Sharks, what's up? Philip Hudson, what's going on? I've already done that. I had Sling. I had all kinds of apps. I just cut them out. They were mostly for football. Good deal, Target Shark Studios. 89 Funk. I'm still surprised that some folks can't make 400 and save. I'm going to talk about that mindset right now. When you are in a paycheck-to-paycheck mindset, you do not think of the next week, let alone years down the road. You're just in this cycle of existing and surviving. You don't even think that, hey, I need to put away $50 a week. That doesn't come to you unless you're taught that and you had really good parents who educate you on that. I can believe it. I think it's actually worse. What's up, Melissa V? What's up, E-Pimp? What's up, Lamode? What's up, Inwalk, Melissa? Um, Melissa V, hoping what what p- new payment thing that eBay's doing? What's up, Afri? The bloke. Uh, I think unless you have a hundred k in savings, it would be tough to take advantage outside the stock market. No, it won't. Not at all. When a recession happens, everything goes on sale. 
everything, gold, silver, Bitcoin, all that's going to go on sale. All cryptocurrency, all, this, this is the thing with the recession. Nothing escapes. Uh, you don't have to have 100K in savings. Now, if you're talking about trying to play the market, time the market, um, that's a whole different game. But even like you, let's put it this way. If you put 25K in the market when the market's down 25, 30%, that's like putting 75K in. Since really, I'm a college student and I have commas in both my checking and savings account. All right, all right. What's up, Latoya? The Wild Jones Report. Berong Pants. Peace, I need help. I have to get a new car and the only way I can get one is financing it. Yo, Brandon, no you don't. Get you a, a hoopty. Get you a point A to point B car. Um, your pride may take a beating, but your wallet will thank you. What's up, Lance Brown? Afri, Patches. Ganji, rugged collars. I'm listening to you and your stuff is never too far off. So I'm pretty sure most people struck grinding off. Yeah, I'm usually way early on this. Like I was way early on Bitcoin. I sold my Bitcoin when it was still going up and people thought I was a maniac. They thought I was a fool. Uh, does this mean real estate wholesalers can bank on making huge profit? Joshua Hill, if you have cash when this happens, you're going to get more for your dollar. What's up, Nathan? They got a vehicle from a family member. Put the reverse. It's going out, and it cost me eight hundred to twenty-four. I, I've had I've had it for two months, but I need it now. <laughs> what's up, Tone Leak? Richard Moore, what's up? Uh, Glenn and I take what you say and put it on steroids and fashion it to my situation. Good deal. Milo, parts of the economy are already in recession because people with so much college debt. That, I think, may be the thing to do it because the college problem is a is a big problem with student loan debt. What's up, Marquise? And we have a president who, who who's, he ain't going to care about that. Oh, when you talk about student loan relief, oh, no, they ain't happening. What's up, Baba? Nats. Nasana, what's going on? Well, thank you, Inwalk. Melissa, they just sent an email in a year, so they're going to be doing something different with the way buyers and sellers get paid. Really, Melissa? I know I knew nothing about that. That sounds interesting. You can use PayPal, but they're not partners now or something. Whoa, that's big. Gerson Estrada, want more money? Learn how to sell all day long. What's up, e Ebony, Ebony, uh, Ebony Vlog? I don't know why I'm messing up your name. Sense of people. I believe people must see recession as something natural as part of the economic theory. Echo decade, there's at least one's a recession in U.S. history. It is part of a, it's not natural, it's manufactured. It's a boom and bust cycle. What's up, Nathan? Glendon, you say stack 10 to 15 cash first and pay credit card debt bare minimum? Yep. Because... Once, once again, based upon what I believe to be happening, you don't have that much time. So I believe that a person who's hustling can probably put away 10 to 15 K in a year. I really believe that. Short change or practice defensive economics. Just be prepared for it. What's up, uh, Ben Israel? So part of this thing that's happening is you have a lot of people who are emotionally attached to stuff. And once again, this is my vast storage auction experience, and I've seen it time and time again. And I became detached from stuff because I got so much stuff. I mean, you know, people used to make jokes like every Thanksgiving, my dining room table was different. And it just kind of threw people. I started living a different life a long time ago. But... One of the things that you got to do is force yourself to act like you broke, force yourself to, if you got money in the bank, it doesn't exist, and figure out a way how you can consistently make money from scratch. I have the luxury of having a business, so every month, you know, we got to start from scratch. But you've got to force yourself to do that because 
people who can, as Estrada said, learn how to sell and learn how to hustle on a consistent basis are going to do fine in this recession. Uh, the people who have to develop these habits, and this is why I'm saying start now. Let's say the recession hits, then all of a sudden you got to start scrambling, right? And by the time that you develop these money saving habits and stuff, recession's over. <laughs> it's going to last like, you know, probably, probably, um, I don't know. I can't say. This one might be 12 quarters. It might be longer than that. So by the time you master all this stuff, it's over. And you, you just can't get the benefits you can. I don't know if you master it before the recession. Uh, Gerald, 15 to 24 months from now. Short change. My lady wants a gym membership. I say no, got to bear down on expenses. Now, let's talk about this. If you got 10 to 15 grand in the bank and you've got your life pared down, you can do that gym membership. You can do some extras. I mean... My gym membership's like 150 bucks a, a month. And part of that, and that's not because I want to pay that, it's because there is no gym that's close by. I would have to, there's a Gold's Gym in Norcross. It'll take me 15, 20 minutes there. I would have to spend about two to three hours, you know, depending upon traffic. So the opportunity cost is too great for me to be messing around, go, trying to find a gym, find parking. It's already hard enough to consistently go to the gym. So I started adding these barriers. I'm just not going to go. So that's one of the things. Uh, Madola, the other thing, killing people is rising rents in areas with hot job markets. Lots of 100K plus earners in Cali and New York living paycheck to paycheck. And those folks are poor, man. Meridian. <laughs> Rugged cut. One of I don't know about that. Uh, the post office has always been slow for me. I got one last time and only owe 17 on it now. Lance Brown, when the government stops welfare and other programs, Lance, there you go, because that's happening. Um, there will be, like a lot of people who got kicked off food stamps, got kicked off because policy changes you will see a serious reduction in welfare programs, which will put more people in dire straits. Pretty much after we pretend the recession's here now. 89, Dr. Funk. I was 32 during the last, last crash. I learned a ton of, uh, learned a ton. What did you learn? Just out of curiosity. what you learn? And why is Siri like coming on? Joshua of Planet Fitness. Now, once again, once you get, you go through this process, you clear out your house, you get rid of everything you don't need, you get rid of clothes. I mean, you you pare down, you have your 10 to 15 grand in the bank, you've got a hustle that's making you an additional 500 to 3,000 a month. You can have some extras. I'm not preaching live this Spartan lifestyle. I am preaching live this Spartan lifestyle temporarily to balance out because I struggle with um, teaching you guys how to get in debt when I know what's coming on. That's part of my fiduciary duty. I know I should be like, well, they're big boys and they're big girls. And let them. I'm like, I, I don't feel it's financially or ethically responsible to lead you guys to slaughter because what's going to happen with business credit? Business credit is going to contract again. Uh, some of your credit cards are going to cram down your limits. Trust me, this is going to happen. So teach you how to make money from scratch, hustle, or teach you some financial moves that you can probably do. And then if you're too leveraged, you can lose your house. That's not really cool. I don't think. Um, Meridian partner, stay fit though, because when the economy goes belly up, so people morality trying to survive, and you better be ready for anything. Um, I feel that, and let's talk about that. That's a good point, Meridian partner. If you don't have a gun, you should get one. And not only should you get one, you should learn how to use it. Because what's going to happen? Crime's going to go through the roof. 
You're going to have people who are going to be trying to take opportunities because right now, those people who cannot raise four hundred dollars, those people who cannot raise one thousand, there was forty four percent who could not raise four hundred dollars. There was sixty seven percent who couldn't raise a thousand dollars cash money in thirty days. What do you think those folks going to do? You think they're going to see that you living well and you got all this stuff and all they got to do is just catch you slipping? Crime is going to go through the roof. Home invasions. I live in a neighborhood and this is a problem in my neighborhood right now. Break ins, people snatching stuff out of cars. Next door is full of this stuff. That's just the petty stuff. You're going to have some desperate people out here. So get yourself a gun. Get yourself a concealed carry permit and learn how to use your weapons. I'm serious. This is no joke because when all of these things and these bad things hit, where are the people going to go to rob? They're going to go to the nicer neighborhoods. They're going to go rob people who have stuff. They're not going to like, you know, unless selling drugs to people in their neighborhood. Maurice Anderson, Jim's here in Georgia, super small. They've gotten that way. Move motivation music, that's probably why the tiny house craze is picking up steam. And definitely, one of the things that millennials, and I want you to understand, millennials have been structured and group think and stuff their whole lives. So instead of going out and getting a house like mom and dad, getting this mortgage, paying all these taxes, they want a little tiny house. They want less stress. They don't. So I see that trend even getting bigger. Uh, thanks, Adrian Klein Productions, the successful trucker. Why don't you sell your house and buy Bitcoin, man? You are crazy. <laughs> You saw my Bitcoin trolling on Facebook, huh? Uh, let's see. In what finance is recession proof? Will how Mill Road Bank Health Bank Head ever be recession proof? Is this a fair statement? You know, that's a good question because I see some stuff happening because you go to West Midtown, How Mill Road, Northside Drive, but there's still a lot of hood. Because, like, all right, you go to Northside Drive over by the AU Center. That's a lot of hood. But you cross over 75 to Northside Drive, you go miles and miles and miles. There's nothing but nice neighborhoods. I don't know if a neighborhood can go from really bad to completely recession-proof. I don't know. They could protect what you've learned. Marine Partners, if you're ever going to get firearms, pistols, and rifles, we'll also know that. Your dominant eye is for aiming a firearm. It's very handy as well as utilizing the iron sets formally. <laughs> All right. What's up, Maurice Anderson? Yeah, I mean, it's for me, it's an opportunity cost because I simply would not go or it'd be a struggle. You don't understand. How, how can I explain this? Traffic is nuts in my neighborhood. I pretty much go spend most of my time probably within five square miles, seriously. But everything's there. Sure, sure. My income is laughing, yet I save 100 a week plus save all my hustle money. You can do it. Uh You give it about 10 years. I mean, there's a lot of interesting stuff that's happening. I know someone that has a house there. They paid um, a two-bedroom house, one-bathroom house. They paid less than 100000 for about 12 years ago. That bad boy is going for four fifty now, so anything is possible. Bob, Babu, Marchicha, how to start a store with your business the right way. Um, I don't, I don't know about that. If you're talking about owning a storage facility or buying contents. Whoa, Really? Let me, you know, um, I haven't really got into this because there's this post, right? And I'm trolling people. I'm intentionally trolling people and they're and they seem to be mad. I did not see that because Bitcoin has been really struggling all day. 
because I woke up this morning, it was 9,500, and it it has been, it's just, it's really, really struggling, because normally it had no problem going $1,500 swing, or even a $2,000 swing in the day. I mean, it was just, wow. Bitcoin, what the heck? There we go. Price. Price of Bitcoin, all of this. 8900 It has been trading in a very narrow window. Like, it's been about a $200 swing, and it's just, it's been sinking below nine. It's, this will probably be, let's see. Let me look at my pictures. It sunk below 9,000 like four or five times today. That is, that's wild. That is very wild. But uh, it's going to crash. And, you know, I'm going to give you scientific reasons why it's going to crash. What time of year is it? It's January. It's February. A lot of folks don't have money. Heating costs has been a wickedly cold winter. So people's heating costs have doubled. So all of the foolish money, the pedestrian money, the regular investors, oh, they out of that market. So, you know, like the people with real money, they're in the market year round. They don't care. They're already wealthy or super wealthy. But the regular folks who were propelling this speculative push up of the price of Bitcoin, they're out of the market or they're getting out of the market. Oh, it's going to be very different this time. That, there's uh, one neighborhood not too far from me. They actually do have roving security. But roving security is not the same as there's a burglar in your house and you got to deal with him now. This dude bakes, what's up? 89 Dr. Funk. I don't have money at the time, but I saw that stock prices were steals like Ford. Um... Let me just go ahead and give you this mindset. And I want you to say this after me. If you there's always a deal. There's always someone in distress. There's always a deal. Good times, bad times, there's always a deal. Just in bad times, there's more of them. But right now, if you're willing to do the work, you can find someone up that was gonna sell you their house for 30, 40, 50 K under appraised value because they need that money. There is always a deal. There's always someone who's in a bad situation. Always. And one of the ways that you can not be that person is to govern your money, govern your lifestyle a certain way where that just doesn't happen to you. Edward Koch, when I bought your course, that's the first lesson I took about saving 2000 and setting up the various bank accounts. It makes a huge difference. Uh, I don't know about Melanated Lighthouse. I don't know about ETF and the apps like Stash. What are they? Uh, Joshua, some of these interstates were strategically placed to separate certain groups of people. Absolutely. Racism was institutionalized. It was governized. And that's one of the reasons it's so attractable. There's just some neighborhoods that never get better. Never. They may have a moment where uh, the people like right now. What will happen? Like take Atlantic Station. If you don't know what Atlantic Station is, it's a mixed use uh, community that they built on a land that used to be a steel mill in Techwood Homes. They knocked all of that down. So if you're going to do something like that, that can drastically change a neighborhood. It's just a massive development. But when you just got, you know, individuals coming in, buying houses and stuff, that's usually still hit or miss. Like I used to live in East Atlanta. East Atlanta, you know, still has some funky neighborhoods, still has some funky houses. Oh, <laughs> just wait a month to see what happens to Bitcoin. I'm serious. Uh, Natsa, Natsa Nicole, it really depends. I don't know anything about the notary business. I've heard people have courses, but I know nothing about it. Move motivation. Oh, there's a lot of people who are late to Bitcoin. 
Wait until it drops to about, I figure it's going to drop to around three grand by May. If it keeps trending the way it is, unless someone comes up with a prop up, because this is the thing that a lot of folks don't understand about Bitcoin. There are certain individuals who have so much Bitcoin that they can influence the market. They can influence an exchange. It doesn't take like, you know, uh, 1,000 people all set. No, one person can move the market. That's why I know it's manipulated. Uh, let's see. Edward Koch, did you see how eBay separated from PayPal and Amazon is opening a store? No, I have not seen it. I've been too busy trolling Bitcoin, folks. I've been late on my hustle. Rockstone, I periodically back cave at my deceased grandmother's home, the lowest economic zip code, but also lowest crime. Nobody has anything to steal. Cold and drafty. I'm focused. No distractions. Oh, Justin, I mean, you. I want you to think about this. Now, let's go by, let's look what happened to the people in Florida. Let's look what happened to the people in Louisiana. Let's look what happened to the people in Houston and Texas. That ain't over. That's still going on. Uh, the slow, the snowstorms up in New York on the East Coast, that's still going on. There's a lot of people who had to spend a lot of money that they weren't prepared to spend. There's so many things that are going on. Eighty nine, Doctor Funk. No, there's opportunity if you're prepared for the opportunity. If you're prepared to make money, if you've got a certain situation, yeah, I started this business in the recession, two thousand nine. That's when I started this business, and it helped. It helped the business. Anyway, do you think there's a such thing as monetizing your whole life? If so, what's the definition? Um, Ty Lopez. I probably will never monetize my whole life. Uh, you notice the people I date you don't see on the channel. I'm not I'm not doing that. I made a decision a long time ago that, you know, I'm going to do this YouTube thing. I'm going to put myself out and it's just going to be me. I'm not bringing other folks into it. Like if I got married and had more kids, I might do a family channel, but that would just attract a whole different audience. Justin Henry, I'm wholesaling homes and flipping them in New Jersey right now. Multifamilies are big here. Cool. William Watts, cash and carry is the best way to go. Butte Wing, you start any business. Uh, let's see. Short change. People make the mistake of investing or saving cash. I, I absolutely agree with that. Before you start investing, before you get in the markets, you need to have ten, fifteen thousand dollars cash, your debt, and all that stuff handled. Because this is what's going to happen. Let's say you get you some Apple stock, and it blows up. But because you have no cash, you have no savings, you're going to have to sell your Apple stock, plus triggering a capital vein, a capital gains event, meaning you got to pay money to the government to do some stuff because you're so pressed. Nathan Blanks and Bitcoin is tanking, but you got guys claiming to have black folks best. Oh, yeah, that that right there. I'm going to say this. Have a long memory and watch who told you the truth and watch who told, led you astray. I never once, you know, said, hey, get on Bitcoin, do this. I was like, I've been saying this for months. It's a bubble. I've been saying this for months. People are like, no, Glendon, you're a hater. You don't know. You think, I, I bought Bitcoin at eight fucking cents a, a coin in 2009. Does that make me a financial genius? No. I took a chance. I risked a dollar and some change. That ain't a big risk. I'm not some financial genius. I bought it and the opportunity came where I sold it for a lot more than I bought it for. That was it. That was easy. I was an investor. I bought it. I held. I never even looked at it for years. Uh, Chris Monroe, block, block, Bitcoin will be replaced, but the blockchain is strong. I don't know about that, and I'm going to tell you why. Right now, you see all these governments, China, uh, China, Korean government, Indian government, they're all like, whoa. And I said this a long time ago. Do you really think 
that governments who have soldiers and guns are going to let this new monetary currency roll out with them not getting a piece of the action. You really think that's going to happen? They killed Gaddafi because he was going to put his country and he was going to try to unite other African countries to put their money behind a gold standard. That would have changed the world. You really think that these governments are going to just allow people to make millions of dollars with no regulation, no oversight, nothing, just cake and money. You really think that's going to happen? Well, if you do, good luck to you and your fantasy because it's not. Regulations coming and it's going to slow this whole thing down. Uh, I do believe there will be a coin that will be coin that will come. Uh, I think Bitcoin is not going to disappear. I don't think Bitcoin is going to disappear at all. I think Bitcoin will either become more of a mainstream currency or it will just become a second. It, it will go to the fourth market, uh, the, the black market. Uh, there's five, there's four markets. There's the primary market. That's Amazon. You buy new stuff from Macy's. Secondary market where you buy used stuff, Craigslist, Facebook. Uh, the third illegal market, weed, light drugs. Fourth black market, arms deals, human trafficking. That fourth market is trillions of dollars. They can support Bitcoin just fine. But for all of you who really think that this, you know, they were going to allow all of these people to make millions of dollars with no taxes, no regulation. Really, bro? Really? It ain't happening. We've got, we went to war over oil. We went to war over oil. So you just think that they're going to let all these people get fantastically rich? It ain't going to happen. What's up, Charlton? Agent J. Poole, Bitcoin, Bitcoin is a sucker train and has left the train. You can't have more stock than someone else than your own hustle. Just saying. The original lady pant, Nathan, coal in Georgia, you're limited to how much you can charge to notarize documents. You might get away with a trip charge, but you can only charge a few dollars to notarize. There you go. Thank you, the original lady pimp. What do you mean, defluent? Uh, let's see. It jumped. Good Lord. All right, hold on. It, it, it really jumped on me. <laughs> Good Lord. Currently using a stash instead of a savings account. It's basically investing in the market on a small level. If you, if you can and have the time, please Google it. Okay. Justin Henry, paying cash is what I do now. My parents never taught me about credit. Uh-huh. Uh, Rick, Rick, I think it's going to deepen. The Wild Jones Report, this is mine, but I like the $5 savings plan. I mean, essentially, anything that teaches you to put money up, do it. Uh, Butween. I don't really have any opinions one way on Alex. The bloke, only edge funds can move the market. This is the reason why you should invest in companies with strong per percentage institutional investment. Yeah, you got to save cash first because you got people out here, like you got folks over here who are arguing with me about Bitcoin who, who are broke, who really don't have no money. And they're arguing like, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know how to read charts. And Bitcoin is literally crashing before their eyes and that they're still hanging on because I figured out that people need for Bitcoin to be successful because they see it as the only hope they have of getting real money. And it's simply not true, but that's how they see it. And that's why I get beat up when I say these things. And that's why I just troll people because... It's lost close to 62% since December 17th. And people still going, hold, hold. And I'm just like, okay. Dominic Taylor, the best security is to realize you don't have no security and behave accordingly. I keep 40 on me at all times in the hood, but it doesn't make my bulletproof. Keep your head low. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, Butte Wayne, if you were a hot chick with the goodies, would you make money on live nudie cams? You know, I actually investigated that. Because, you know, you porn, uh, Pornhub, they actually pay people like YouTube. The same thing. If you screw on camera, they'll pay you a percentage. And I've looked at it and all those folks are poor. They're all poor. They're not making a lot of money. I don't know what the payout is, but they're not making a lot of money. And I see them, you know, doing Twitter and Instagram and like watch my stuff. I don't think they, you know, let's say they double what YouTube pays out. That's still not a lot for what you're doing. I, I would not do that. <laughs> Maurice Anderson. <laughs> uh, Rockstone. I like LeVar Ball. A lot of people hate him, but you know what? He's loud. He's obnoxious, but he has positioned his sons to be multimillionaires. Ain't mad at him. A lot of folks don't like him. Now, I guarantee you, if it was a single mother acting the same way, nobody would say boo. Because single mothers can be controlled, but a strong, independent black man that's building his own economy, he can't be controlled. That's a problem. Melanated Lighthouse, don't do that. You got to put some money to work. Uh, that 10 to 15 grand you put in the bank, you, don't, you know, that's just your attitude money. Uh, Michael Dennis, what do you think human labor will cost during the coming recession? It will be dirt cheap. Here's a funny stat. The price for porn stars to do um, a, a movie or a scene or whatever, they used to get like three to five grand. It's like 750 to maybe 1500 bucks. You ever wonder why porn stars do so many movies? That's why. It used to be a girl can do like two movies a month and make $12,000. Two. 24 random dicks a year. And she can make, you know, 144 grand. It ain't like that anymore. You know why? Because the number of people who want to get in porn is an all time high. So market forces come into play. More people to be in porn, the less they pay. You got girls out here doing all kind of crazy stuff for literally 150 bucks, 200 bucks. Serious. I wouldn't even mess with Lamar. If I met Lamar on ball, I'd shake his hand. Medola. I mean, seriously, I was no genius. Everyone that got into crypto early was not a genius. We all said, hey, this could be something. Spin a little bread. That was it. There was nobody. Uh, I would say there's a few people who went all in, like some dude. He bought 40 grand when it was eight cents. He knew some. <laughs> uh, Geometrics. Uh, this is kind of like something totally different. You want to be cash positive during this recession. You want to format your head, ask this question, how can I get more cash today? How can I get more cash? What can I sell? How can I serve my fellow man? You want to be asking that because... See, like me, um, I've pared down, and I used to spend a lot of money on my credit card every month. I have now set a new limit. My limit on my credit card is like 1500 After I spend 1500 I used to spend like 10 20 and pay it off in the, the month. I don't do that anymore because I see what's coming. And I don't want to get in a situation where I got like a thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollar credit card bill, and I'm paying monthly minimums of like fifteen, eighteen hundred dollars. They ain't happening. So to answer your question, if you're still working on building your credit, yes. Justin Henry, Qaddafi will have changed the world. That's why I think these uh, young Bitcoin folks are so misinformed because you really think you're going to allow the United States, the, the United States, the, you think the United States is going to allow China, is gonna, China doesn't even let their folks use the internet, but they're going to allow them to become Bitcoin billionaires. That ain't happening. I'm surprised the regulation. And also, you know, if you look at the chart, Bitcoin didn't really start percolating until 2015, 2016. So less than two years they came in when they saw it was going to be some. Nope, I don't, Lieutenant Johnson. 
Mood motivation. Always follow real proof over proposed credentials with listening advice, especially in the age of the internet. I know exactly who you talk about. Uh, 89 Funk, that's a very good possibility they could be. They've replaced us in many categories, but some categories they haven't. Now, Gaddafi was not a friend of blacks, but he was about to change the monetary policy. Uh, thoughts on precious metals? Get some. Your portfolio should include maybe 10%. I mean, you don't go crazy with it. Oh, China's a gangster. Uh, let's see. He jumped again. Oh. Let's see. Hold on. It jumped. I'm trying to. Good Lord. Uh. <laughs> All right. Government has guns. Babu is correct. Yeah, like, um, I, I don't really know what to think of Boyce. I, I have no real comment on him because I, I haven't watched him. So I have a firm policy of not comment on people I don't watch and know their stuff. Like this Bitcoin thing, I study it every day and I study other cryptocurrencies so I can speak on that. Uh, crypt Bitcoin was the first one. Then I think Ethereum, I don't know the whole chain, but there's so much crap out there. He does, Michael Dennis. I like that Geraldson people invest in Bitcoin and never themselves first. Uh, Andre, do you know that you have someone trying to collect money on your behalf as Hustleman? No, there's nobody trying to collect money. <laughs> All right. Uh, I mean, getting a little Bitcoin is not a bad thing. It's just folks think they're going to get rich overnight. The successful truck I've seen that that you didn't know how to read charts. Yeah, because essentially they're saying every January Bitcoin falls. Well, Bitcoin was started in 2008. And out of the nine years, five years, it didn't. So that was some noise. Oh, yeah. Mood motivation, I think that's a big part of it. 89 Dr. Funk, great book on saving money. It's the richest man in Babylon. It cost me $10 and helped me save thousands. That's true, Malola. <laughs> Low level Owen. <laughs> LeVar is the blueprint to being a great dad. I mean, he's setting up his kids nice. I mean, I don't even know why the man has so many haters. Well, actually, I do. He's a black man that doesn't bow down to people. That That's that's enough. Rugger Collis, if the internet broke, who would survive? There is no definite answer. Just do what you do. Um, I would have to, you know, if the internet broke, I would have to go back to picking up the phone and calling people and making deals. Uh, Rick, Rick, no. Uh, we had this conversation. You should focus on the business that serves all people and make that money. Stadium status. Uncle G, I want to buy this barbershop. It has seven chairs, already has clientele for 14K. I have half of that. Should I get a loan from my credit union for 14K and keep the liquid for safety? Uh, the real question is, how much money does this barbershop make? It only makes 14K. Well, does this barbershop have rent? This is bar. I mean, what are the expenses? You got to crunch those numbers, man. Porn stars getting into a. <laughs> they've been doing that for years. Uh, Pornhub gives people ten. I, I don't. I don't think so, man. Because I've. 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 I've, I've, uh, I've invested that. I. I don't think so. I don't really think so. 
maybe if the person, you know, just like YouTubers, there's some people who are more successful. There are people who are more enthusiastic. I know Agent J. Poole. Uh, I was in the sex industry in 2001. Paid okay, not pay shit. Most guys I know, ex-porn stars, work at Home Depot and are security guards. Dang, there you go. Straight from a porn star. Oh, that's just, that's just starting. Shortchange male porn stars are lucky to work once a month and they're banging grannies and BB. Really? What's up, regular web guy? Dang. That's crazy. Uh, land, they ain't making no more land. Really? Rugged college? That's funny. So the overhead is 1K a month. Each chair brings in about 150 a week. Seven chairs. That's a G. Hmm. I don't know. Crunch those numbers some more, man. Well, Levinsky Page, uh, one of the reasons I say this is like if you have a house and if you're in like a bad situation, you want to bail on that house while you can Remember when a lot of people were trying to, because see, the real estate market is going to slow down. It ain't going to stop, but it's going to slow down and pricing will be depressed. That's coming. So now if you were thinking about selling your house and getting out of it, do so now. Um, all right, so gee, stock market involvement at this time or new business. Here's the thing with stocks. You never know when there's going to be a bubble. So let's say you're, you're my age, you're 51 years old and you go invest in the stock market. These next few years could be brutal, 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 brutal. Now, uh, I will say if you're 21 and you throw money in the stock market and you dollar cost average, yeah. But most of us are not doing that. If you start a business, you get active cash that you can control. You can't really control nothing in the stock market. Let's see. Wait, wait, wait a minute. When you broke and do porn, you would bang anything. Wow, that's that's kind of. Uh. I remember articles back then saying not to invest in big. Uh, back then, I think if Bitcoin hadn't been prostituted by institutional investors, it would probably be like four or five grand, and still I would still have mine. It's just when it rose up to that, I was like, I don't think this is ever going to happen again. I could be wrong. Dominic Taylor, politics, money, and war have no color. Pretty much. What's up, Zola? <laughs> All right, Rugged. Really, Charlotte and Honey Boo Boo fans? That includes guys in the bunny suit. That is crazy. But, I mean, seriously, you got to start making money moves like now because essentially this is what happens. And I saw this with people trying to sell me stuff during the recession. They waited too late. I already knew what the market was. It was like, I'm not going to give you $5,000 for everything in your house. I give you $1,500. And that's me being generous because I'm probably going to make three. You got to make these moves now while time is good and the getting is good because if you wait, you're going to be sorry. And that's one of the reasons like I'm I'm not just saying this, I'm doing this. I went around my house today. Uh there was a few things in the basement I'm getting rid of and some some other decisions I have to make because when we moved from the Dunwoody house to this house, you know how much my move was? It's $500. Uh, the next move will probably be eight because there's more stuff, but I'm keeping that. I'm, I keep it light, man. Really? Uh, 
like I don't think real estate's going to be very lucrative for some people, and it's going to be very bad for some. Folks with cash are going to win. Well, my next home, um, my my goal is, and I've already put it up, is to pay cash. So, you pay cash, it doesn't really matter what the market does. That's an amputee porn. Damn. Uh, D. Hectrix is very important to have ten year goals, twenty year goals. You got to start making these moves now. That's why I'm having this stream. I talked a little bit on Facebook. I'm probably going to uh, troll the um, Bitcoin people tomorrow because if it falls, like I think it's going to fall tonight. Because see, the thing is, it's doing big drops. It's you know normally it would like drop and it would like pop back up within minute hours. It ain't doing that now. It is struggling to hold its position, which is indicative of me if it's crashing. But uh, you know that's just me. And wait until I get in there because, see, one of the reasons I'm trolling them is they're mad. Now, if you were fully confident of Bitcoin and you knew what it was going to do and you were like, that guy's crazy, you wouldn't even engage with me. The fact that they come in and they're getting insulting and pissy means that they're puckering because, uh, whoa, I'm, I'm just going to, let's see. I have to make sure I can see that. It's just been fighting that all day. This morning it was 9,500. Bitcoin may get into the mid 8, 855 tomorrow. So it's struggling. Uh, Craigslist has changed. It's still good to sell furniture. Uh, with Craigslist, you got to write ads that are on point. You just can't put up anything. Uh, the author from the Wolf of Wall Street says, stay away from Gitcoin. DJ Slink made 25 in sales, profit 1K. Hey, uh, you got some profit. Uh, Joshua Hill, there are people who have the ability to buy cash, multiple houses right now. When this thing melts down, their cash is going to go further. So instead of them buying four houses for cash, they're going to buy six or eight. Like I said, uh, if you got cash, you can win. I mean, if you got, all right, you got 10, 15 grand, you have no bills, you got some income coming in, you can buy and sell gold, you can buy and sell silver. You could really get heavy into eBay. You can get heavy into Amazon. One of the reasons that most people can't do these things is they don't have any money. And then they go put it on the credit card because it's on the credit card. People don't treat credit card money as real money, even though it is real money because it's going to cost you more money. For some reason, they don't. Uh, there was a stat that people spend 50% more when they do it on the credit card than when they do it with cash. <laughs> we were giving out solutions. Yeah, because this this is how I got out of some stuff. It works. It's brutal. It's a mindset. But if you go ahead and you dedicate yourself to it, you can get out of it. I mean, a lot of these guys who I'm, I'm just really trolling on the Bitcoin thing, a lot of them have lost a lot of money. And they're in that point where they are praying that Bitcoin goes back up because if they sell, they lock in their losses. And I just don't think that Bitcoin's going back up. I could be wrong. And if Bitcoin jumps up to 25,000, I'll be like, you know what? I was wrong. It, it, hey, I shouldn't have sold. I just don't see it. I just really, really don't see it. <laughs> JP, there's a ideal Bitcoin and pucker up. I mean, there's a lot of people out there who are panicking because, okay, when I troll people and sometimes I know what I'm trolling 
Uh, one person was like, this guy's just a troll. And I was like, no, I'm an informed troll. Know that. Why are you engaging with me? Uh, I'm going to tell you a little secret. If someone wants to go back and forth with you and versus ignoring you, they're heavily invested. Now, why are they heavily invested? I'm, I'm like, I'm invested in being right about Bitcoin. You know, if I'm wrong, I'll just have, you know, pie on my face and life goes on. But see, I don't have any... I don't have any I don't have any skin in the game. I have no Bitcoin. I was gonna buy some Ripple. Fortunately I didn't. Let's see what's the price of Ripple. You ever notice like Ripple? Because Ripple did some crazy stuff. Uh what is the price? Ripple, come on, come on. Let's see. Whoa! <laughs> I did not see this is another thing that people hate to admit and they don't like it when I point it out. Um, Bitcoin is the de facto um, leader of the pack. Whatever Bitcoin does, most of these other coins are impacted because they're built off the blockchain. So as the way of Bitcoin goes, so does these other coins. And, you know, people's like, no, no, and like, yeah, yeah, I actually know how these things are built. So hold on, I'm going to pump it up and we, we will talk about this because. Um, let's see, let's go to view, zoom in. There we go. There it is. So. Big uh, Ripple was like. 25 cents in decent. I'm not sure because I haven't followed Ripple as closely. I do know it was 25 cents. It jumped to 50, it jumped to 75, and now it's the 96 cents. I would have bought in at a buck 50. And I was like, you know what? Just sit back and watch and see what it does. So I would have lost 30% um, of my money right now. Let's see. Let's look at this. Circulating plot because one of the things that people like to do is talk to you about market cap, supply, and percentages, and they don't like to mention the real numbers. See, Ripple actually gives you whoa, holy moly! So that's what it's done in one month. Let's see what is it done in. So, got whoa, got up to three dollars and fifty-two cents. They're all following Bitcoin. They're all linked to Bitcoin in some way. Hmm. So that that's that's how that cookie crumbles. That's very interesting. Um, one of the reasons that I am not in cryptocurrency is. I think all the, all the markets are being manipulated, and I really want to see what they do when they're really forced into some adversity. Um, part of my strategy when I get back into crypto, and I will, is to be a long-term investor. And I'm just seeing a lot of flaky stuff that I just can't explain. Therefore, I'm keeping my money. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. So be it. Uh, let's see. I mean, the cash buyers are going to be winning. Uh, Nathan Justin, it can. It just depends. No, Andre Kelly, don't don't spend fifteen grand on buying stuff. A little twenty five k Bitcoin. Hit up Pumper Plot. Good Lord. This early, these websites. Wow. All right. So um, I am about to depart. Tomorrow is Friday. I will be back at 930. And for those of you 
who wants something. Let's see. Oh. Actually, okay. I was like, what is it doing in there? All right, so let's go here. And boom. The links are below your video. I think that this would be the one for most of you to get into the proper mindset. You can get 40% off for a few more hours. And Thursday, just Thursday in lowercase is the code, Thursday. So you can grab anything at Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills for 40% off. You can do that right now. Links are below the video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. And seriously, listen to this message. Just don't um, listen to this. Do it. Because let's say I'm 100% wrong, right? Well, you do this, your life is fundamentally going to be better. It just is. The Hectrix, that's true. All right, uh, I will see you guys tomorrow, 8.30 p. 8.30 a.m., 8.30 a.m., not p.m., and we will be talking about some more hustle. Uh, I'm going to break out some of the old hustles because they still work. They don't work as well as they used to, be clear about that, but they still do work. I've been doing a lot of testing with Craigslist ads, and I've been selling stuff. So I may do, like, how to write a Craigslist ad or something like that. All right, so you folks have a good one. I will catch you guys later. I be out.